Hey guys, Endoran27 here, and we are back in Crusader Kings 3. Now, before we get started, I want to go ahead and talk a little bit about this video, because it's going to be a little bit different, and you'll notice that. Uh, it's not going to have my usual live commentary. The Land of the Roos achievement that I was playing, it fell horribly, 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 horribly flat. Got about... 10 counties away from forming the Empire of Russia died and had the kingdom split in three. Um, so I decided to go ahead and uh, you know, on my own time try it again. And I died again. And I kept going through and each time I get a little bit better but I kept failing. So the footage in front of you is actually my eighth attempt at this and so, what I'm going to do, I went ahead and I recorded, I, I achieved the Land of the Roost achievement, so spoiler alert right there. Uh, I recorded it all, I ended up with a few hours of material. I'm going to break this up into a few videos, and I'm recording my commentary over it. I do have my young heir, Endar in 28 here, and... Although in the internet speak, he's probably Endar in 2760. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to walk through this. I'm going to do my best to provide some interesting commentary. But just know, I already know how this goes. So, uh, as you can see from the beginning there, we get, get our stuff set up. Uh, first and most importantly, we go into the chivalry focus and... Uh, there's a couple ways that you could start on this. He could start out with seven uh, skills or perks in any of those three trees. I find usually you want him to be either on the leftmost tree or the rightmost tree. If you start in the center tree, I'd just say start over. Because that, that tree is worthless for what we're going for. Um, we marry off our son. Uh, I find that... Excuse me. Uh, I find that marrying him off to somebody in Poland is probably your best strategy uh, because they're far enough away that they're not going to cause issues with your own empire, but they're near enough that you don't have to worry about the uh, you don't have to worry about uh, them not being able to help you. The other thing is is that it doesn't seem like they get into that many wars. Uh, some of my runs, I think. This one in particular, they didn't ever get into any wars. Um, but usually there's maybe one or two, and you may have to go help them with those. Or, or you could choose not to. It's a distraction. But regardless, it's what it is there. Oh, this, the other thing on this last attempt, uh, they updated the game, and they changed a couple things. So now... Uh, the tribals can actually have a royal court of their own. Yeah, buddy, they can. And uh, it's not as in-depth as the regular game, but I haven't done anything with the regular court, so I wouldn't know what the differences are. Uh, we'll probably get to that point at some point. I did learn a little bit about it, so, you know, we'll, we'll cover that when we get to that point. Uh, but it wasn't a focus in this. Uh, right off the bat... There's a few issues, and I find that expanding to the north is probably your better option. But you don't play with the keyboard. Expanding to the north is your better option. So Vodi is a good war right off the bat. And just remember, these early wars, typically your, your enemies aren't going to have nearly the same amount of uh, alliances. Now here I'm going to try to cut him off, but he's going to retreat past his border, so we're just going to sit tight and wait. And there we go. First conquest out of the way. So then, if we can ransom any prisoners, great. We didn't take any there, so we're just going to ignore that. Uh, it's kind of a fine line, because sometimes you capture someone important, such as the chief himself, uh, you could you could end the war faster and if you're playing you know you have to start as Rurik and your time is very short that was always the problem the problem wasn't the enemies I think I had two games that ended because the enemies were powerful enough that I 
It's a kitty cat. Gotta have that kitty cat. So, um, this is an, an event. And I'll probably read some of these, but this particular one was not that important. So we're gonna hold court. Um, yeah. A frightful peasant strolls all too close before a guard steps between us. Ooh, he backs up with a wink, laughing through scanty. Your lordness have come here to, from Tikvin with a matter of grey uh, import. His gray, uh, eyebrows undulate. You see, King, the farmer's wife, Sal, slipped a fence one night, and she she, she only went and got into the old knacker's veggie patch. His pride and joy! Tears of laughter stream down the convulsing peasant's face. You don't say, please go on. I'm just, I should not do this. Steward Ingvar, go. Fix it, please. You are a fool. My fool. Get a good gesture. Kind of of the mind that, uh, what? How did this man get in? Anyone? Yeah. Hmm. The best one to me seems to be the stewarding of our option. A markedly disgruntled chieftain Karhu rushes in, hurries into your throne. Liege, I have a right to the chieftain of Tikvin, no matter what anyone else might say. Will you relinquish what does not belong to you in support of my claim? I must win it by the sword. My claim is the truer. I uh, choose this one because that sounds like more fun. Chieftain Karu and I stalk round each other, each weighing our options. He hefts a fearsome axe while I grip my own sword tightly. The deadly weapon feels cool and weighty in my grasp. This fight may only be first, uh, be till first blood, but that doesn't ease my nerves. You know, I'm gonna break my guard, Karu. That's the best you've got. You can't even hit me. You know what your problem is, Karu? No. Well, so I like. I'm looking at these options on the left. Chances of increasing my injury and success. So he's got the same things going on for him. So I choose to tire him out. Time and again, I backpedal, dodge, and weave, always keeping just within tempting target distance. Soon, Karhu's showing signs of exhaustion. Spotting an opportunity, Karhu lunges forwards and headbutts me hard in the face. I reel backwards, wrong-footed. My form is excellent, with little chance for mistake, and Karhu's stance is failing. My opponent is still holding off my blows well, but he seems close to faltering. I can never break my guard. I'll blow for my sword. There we go. With a powerful cleave from my sword, I send Karhu reeling backwards, then step into the blow and kick him straight in the chest. Well aware that he is utterly outmatched, Karhu hurls himself at me boldly, forcing me backwards with all his desperation of the doomed. My form is excellent, blah blah blah, we fear that. Foolish bed swerver, can't you do better? Strike parry riposte, or you know what your problem is, Karhu. I, I don't think that one's a good option. I like looking at it. It just doesn't help. So this one increases his likelihood of success. And doesn't help me. I mean, it does help me. So. Few men can withstand my barrage of powerful cleaves, and my opponent is no exception. Karhu tries a couple of perfunctory quick slashes, but nothing I can't easily dodge away from. Gambling on Karhu's timidness, I lunge forward with a powerful cleave that knocks him totally off balance. Not stopping to breathe, I boot him hard in the knee, and Karhu falls with a heavy thud. This gives me ample time to position myself for a gruesome kill. He yields within seconds. And we win. I actually kind of like that event. That was, uh, that was a lot of fun to do. Uh, as soon as, his, as it is his turn to speak, the agitated man in front of me screams, The end is nigh! Signs are clear and elsewhere, everywhere. The people of the Chiefdom of Vodi know it all too well. Blah, 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 blah. The world's coming to an end. Salvation must be achieved through every means. Wise R. Stark, stay and teach me the way. Nonsense, burn this raving heretic. Take this fool out of my sight. I kind of like this, too. I, I love books, guys. So story events like this. It's part of a, probably one of my favorite things here. Um done holding court uh but story events they they add the flavor to the game it's probably why i most enjoy uh this game in particular because you get you know in a, in a sense you're telling the story of a kingdom but in a <laughs> even more important sense you're telling the story of your character yeah and uh, and it's probably the most personal of all the paradox games yeah, buddy. So, moving on. So, I came up with a with a uh, line of attack here that allows me to take a little bit of land from everybody here in the north. So we're gonna start with um, Cargo Got to name our kitty cat Gray. There we go. Uh, and obviously he's gonna he's gonna zippy doo dah out of there, and we're gonna move in and. So I one thing I did find, and this is far from flawless, but if you weigh out number the enemy, have one guy sitting 
and uh, siege down his stuff. Have your other guy, your other army, I should say, uh, wait. A lot of times they go straight for your capital because that gives them the most war score. Um, and so you can position your army to go after him. Now, he will run away if you get too close or go for other targets of opportunity. You just want to pounce on him when he hits a fort, then you can take advantage of that defensive uh, boost to yourself. So he's going to siege this down, and obviously I'm going to come and try to catch him. Um, you don't always succeed, but if you can catch him, that's an easy win, and maybe even an easy stack wipe. I, I don't believe this army will stack wipe. Bam. Nope. He got away. No stack wipe. He's wasted his supplies, though. He's had some of his men uh, die to attrition. Uh, we're just gonna watch what he does next. And now he's going for my capital. So we're gonna run down here and catch him in Novgorod. Our other army is gonna siege up there in Kirilov. He's gonna try to run away. Because he sees us coming. Uh, I... The AI is not great in this game, but I do feel like it does decently. I have had issues where it'll it'll get me, and it's pretty good at pouncing on you when it sees an op opportunity. I looked away there, but I'm assuming we caught him because he has way fewer troops. No, we didn't catch him. He's just suffering an awful amount of attrition because he's an idiot and he ran through the heartland of my territory. Don't do that. It's a good way to lose your soldiers and... And I didn't have to do anything. Now, we won our siege. There's no reason to carry on unless we can sell some prisoners. No, nope, doesn't help us at all. We're gonna drop this guy. Now, the number one thing we want is the Bellum Justum. If you start on the left, you have it already. Uh, you're gonna want to go for the right branch and get three perks in there can't remember what they were called, but on the other hand, going, if you have to go down the left, what I found I liked was doing Bellum Justum, uh, Forced March, and whichever one it is that's in between the two. And that's just because you need those, and that's the earliest you can get in. So now we're coming up here to Ustia. Like I said, we're, we're doing this so we can s swipe a little bit of land away from everyone. Because any other combination that you do, I, I suppose you could also go for Totma, but any other combination that you do is going to leave you with um, Kol Kolmogori or Ustjig will be protected from you. Great. Ah, she's allergic to kids. Ah, well, I love my wife, and people are more important than cats. So we'll give her away to someone. I don't think any of these guys even like me, but I hope they like my kitty. Take good care of my kitty cat. Yeah, had to get rid of him. Just wasn't any choice. Alright, his army's gonna wander on around. Sorry guys, this will be a little noisier than normal because he's quite awake. Which I'm glad, because he was pretty acting a little under the weather yesterday, so. But I do want to get this series out. By the way, I am recording our next series as well. Our next series is going to be... Oh, I had a daughter. That's a good thing. Our next series is going to be RimWorld. I haven't played that game in ages, and I've been having a lot of fun, although it's, it's changed a lot. I mean, the last time I played it, COVID wasn't a thing. That gives you an idea. <laughs> there were no... Um, expansions so I'm hoping that that will be a fun series I hope you'll join me on that one but in the meantime the task at hand so just rinse and repeat the, the AI does the same thing we're gonna go catch him in Novgorod he's big enough I doubt he runs away even though the logical thing to do would be to run away And I should, I'm really bad at this, but I should check what kind of troops he has. I never do it, and there's a couple times it lands me in trouble. So, keep that in mind. 
Ah, he is taking care of my kitty cat. All right. And bam. Get the heck out of here. <laughs> Buddy, you're being a little wiggly today. And then we'll get you some breakfast after this video. <laughs> no, fussing. <laughs> By the way, here's the other thing. I, I read as I was going through, I had to do some research because my strategy just wasn't working. And so, I did read, don't pass off Duchess, because it could potentially lead to you having more, um, thank you for knocking that out of my ear, buddy, could lead you to more um, revolutions, because you want your vassals to all be Russian. I did miss that, but the first thing we do is to take the decision to become Russian, it doesn't do us any favors with the Ukonosku. But we start as a statue, and they don't like us that either. So, or the Asatru don't like, the Ukonosku don't like the Asatru. So, it doesn't help. You may as well get Russian, because when you start moving in your conquest to the south, once you're the legitimate liege to someone, then they'll just vassalize to you. You might have to give them a gift, but... It's a solid strategy. Yeah, so now we're going after Kol uh, Kolmogora. Kolmogori. Can't remember now. The things we share. Ah, love is beautiful. Yes, I forgot about upping my my uh, men at arms. Remember, men at arms are your best soldiers. Your levy. They're garbage. Your men at arms are the ones, the, the solid core around which your whole army forms. Unexpected visit. Ah, I've had this event a couple times. She's writing a letter. She hides it really quick. Um, she likes me a lot, so I'm going to trust her. And, as happens usually, she gives me a present of a ring. I think it was a ring. But, regardless, I got a little bit of money, which is beautiful. I like money. Almost as much as I like my wife. He's gonna hightail it out of there because he's no dummy. And that's okay. All we have to do is keep him busy while we siege down his stuff. So if he feels better running away, let him run. Oh, have an event at the court. So these show up every one while. Distrust of friendship. Anxiety knots my stomach as jealousy rears its ugly head. I sigh and glare at the cause of my misery. I know I ought to be thankful that our guest, Vire, appears to get along well with King, King Ingrid. He stopped moving on my woman. Their smiles are kind, blah blah blah, yeah. They become friends, but not lovers, so. Uh, there's no way to do that one without stressing out, so I just kind of do the one that stresses me out the least that that one that option didn't stress me out but there's there is a legitimate chance that uh she and him become lovers and that causes all kinds of issues one of my playthroughs she became a friggin hussy started popping out babies for another lord left and right um i probably should have just arrested her but well what can you do i loved her even if she didn't love me <laughs> Constantly betrayed me. Yeah. Rurik is a kind of a sucker when it comes to those kind of things. At least the way I play. I guess he doesn't have to be, but... With Queen Ingrid's diligent administration in my household's finances, there's more gold at the end of the season than expected. How should we put this best to use, husband? So these are all options. Pick your favorite. And save it for now. <laughs> Gold is always important because you need those titles. Uh, more titles, better. Near as I can tell. But getting those king and empire titles are the most important. Obviously, we're a long ways away from getting an empire title. But getting the, the uh, kingdom titles are the most important. I'm going to go ahead and claim our spoils. Oh. move 
move on to Onega. I think it was Onega. I don't know. We're going to take the county of Onega, regardless what the uh, duchy is named. The chief dub is named. No, but first, we're at max. Now, um, I don't know. I know in the very, very early days, going over your holdings was actually a net positive. Uh, I'd like to think they fixed that. I don't ever do it. I'm just going to keep to what I'm doing. And on rinse, uh, rinse and repeat. Now, this one is a little trickier just because of how far he is away. And you'll see here in a second. I, I make a little bit of a mistake here. I choose to pop up right next to him. And my guys haven't had time to get home yet. So you can see what happens here. I'm in alliance with my son Helgi. Uh, yeah, I uh, I almost don't get my my armies raised in time, which would have been disastrous. And I know better. Although I didn't realize why it was doing that. After you disband your armies, they need a little bit of time to go home. And the long, the less time you give them, the longer it takes them to come back. So, if you're coming right off a campaign, don't put your rally point right next to their rally point. Which is almost always their capital, is what I've noticed. Um, oh, this is a real hussy. I refuse. <laughs> the last thing I want is, is claimants to the throne. <laughs> And I am not going to go take any sort of a, of a attrition. So I can be patient. Now, I do make another mistake here, which is that I uh, I knew better. Oh, I moved, I, yeah. I moved him off. That army shouldn't have moved. But I also did not track where my enemy was going, and I can't follow him as closely. I have to take the long route, the long road. I know where he's going, but if I follow him that way, I will lose troops. And maybe I should have just taken the loss, but really didn't want to. Hindsight's twenty twenty. It probably would have been worth the hundred troops you lose. It's not like he would have been any more a threat to me. Now I have this problem a lot, and I wasn't particularly bothered by it because I just didn't care, a and I probably wouldn't change it even if I did. But. In order to maintain your level level of grandeur, you do have to spend some some money on things like accommodations. I, I hadn't really realized that at this point. But again, my money was more important to me anyways for the purpose of getting the titles. Having a glorious court doesn't help me. And I hate losing the, uh, the level of piety. So these guys, they gotta go. It... <laughs> never really causes me too much issues anyways so why are you gonna fall it never really causes me too many issues anyway so I didn't I wasn't particularly bothered by letting it you know, arresting them but that said that's a good way to piss people off so if you have a particularly powerful advisor you may not want to arrest him I've never had it fail to arrest but just keep that in mind. I know. The nice thing, too, is that you can assign, make vassals out of some really good people, and then you can get a very powerful council. And make money off of them. Because they'll pay for themselves and their lover, usually. So, it's a good way to make 60 gold. I took his son hostage. I probably, recognizing that... I'm not getting there in time to save Novgorod. I probably should have just ended the war. But that 50 gold was just so tempting. So. Oh well. The, the problem here is that you never know what they're going to get when they take your capital. Uh, I've had them take my wife captive and turn her into their concubine. Uh, and that sucks.
but the flip side is, is that I can always get another wife, and I can make her, you know, choose the one that I need. Uh, I did forget to mention one thing there. I can't remember if I did it already or not. I think I may have forgot. Oh, yeah, I did. I, I think. I don't know. Um, you want your physician to be someone you trust, but also you want your wife to uh, manage the realm, help raise more money. It's just, it's the most beneficial way of doing it, in my view. I can't remember if, like I said, I can't remember if I did that yet or not. But regardless, and yeah, one of my vassals is uh, this one, the um, chieftain Vodi. Vodi causes me all kinds of issues throughout this run. I, I think I probably kill like four different lords of Vodi. That might be a little exaggeration, but yeah, they. Uh, Lords of Vodi get executed a lot in this run through. Yeah, you sing him to us. You, my court musician. <laughs> and we win. Oh no, I did change her. She's managing my domain, so. That's helping us to stay in the green, or the black, I guess, with our money. So we're going to enforce our demands. Now, I don't believe that we are nearly... Well, maybe we're getting close to ready to go back to war again. That said, uh, this video is getting kind of on the long side. I think we're going to decide who we want to go after next, and we're going to call it there. Indeed. Alright, made my vassal, just dealing with the situation. Don't care about the duchies. Legitimately, I probably should, but it doesn't seem like it actually caused me too much issue. So. Losing prestige, that's my man at arms. And as you make those titles, that'll eventually get to where you can support more men at arms. And you get so much from the conquest that going a little into the negative is not that big a deal. I mean, it costs you to do conquests against people not of your faith. It'll cost you piety on the other side, but... Yeah, we're going to go to war with Vologda for this county on the left, um, whatever that is called. That said, this video has run a little bit long. Uh, oh, got an, our artifact back. I don't catch it immediately, but... Uh, that said, if you're liking this content, uh, leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel, and we will catch you guys in the next one as we continue our pursuit of the Land of the Roos.